you know, you've grown a pretty considerable audience in the last several years. I think even since I got to know you, you were like around 2 million subs and you, you know, you've had quite the, quite the story arc from starting on YouTube as kind of a gamer uploading gaming videos mostly. And then gamer. in the commentary and now you, the stuff you put like you've just, you've kind of, you know, you started going, I, and, and I remember talking about this kind of going the, the moist critical route where you're just talking about things, but you're doing it at such a high level with such a good team where you're taking these things, the editing is on point, the, the, the stories are on point and it's just, uh, how, what was that? What was that process like to go from like uploading uploading shit gaming videos to now pumping out long form, highly produced, well researched content on a regular basis? Was it was it just like the natural inclination to continue trying to take the next step? Like, hey, I'm doing this; it's going well. How can I do this better? Was that was that what it felt like for you? I would say for the amount of time that I've actually for for the amount of time that I've been focusing on the candy company. Yeah. The YouTube stuff has just been pure inspiration and just like wanting to improve stuff, wanting to hire more people, wanting to pay the people that I have more so they can yeah. enjoy themselves more. And like, you know, just everyone on my team literally is my friend that I could have a one on one conversation with for hours, like genuinely. That's great. Um, and they're all good people. There's a couple of them that I don't know as well as I would like to, but we're, sure. you know, we're getting like satchel. Pfft. Um, it's reality, though. That's how it <laughs> little, is, yeah. little shout out. Just kidding. I love Satchel. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it, I would say the last like two years since the candy has come into fruition, I've had much larger goals. So it's gotten me to think outside of the box in terms of the YouTube thing. So I right. can do things out of inspiration, like actually make decisions like, oh, I, I want to better this or, you know, let's have a meeting once a day. So we're getting on everyone's getting on the same page um, yeah. instead of just kind of, you know, delegating and then just watching money come in and doing the minimal amount of work and trying to have as much free time as possible. Before that, it was literally just, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't want to do anything else and I know that I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to figure it out a little bit. And I think that was more the the desperado kind of like trying to figure it out, failing a lot, succeed. I actually, I, I'm going to, I'm going to give Andrew Tate some credit. The okay. video that I made where I, I interviewed Andrew Tate was the beginning of my um, actually trying to run a business in terms of YouTube. That next story, Stark. That yeah. next story arc, excuse me. I, I forget sometimes that you interviewed Andrew Tate. That's mm -hmm. so, We're good that's buddies, so me and him. Yeah, you guys text once in a while? <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is this? It's, no, I know, like this, it's a thing, It's but that's like a thing that him and his brother yeah. do, and it's like the sign of an alpha male, right? Ah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if what it saying, is. Like, I feel like this whole interview, I, I should have been sitting here like this, and maybe yeah, you know, exactly. people would have taken me seriously. Yeah, maybe I would have yeah. had more respect for you, Leon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've been <laughs> talking about how fucking tight your body is, just holding my hands <laughs> like this. Yeah. Shoot, this thing stinks. Yeah, so tight. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up. Um, no, I love yeah. that, though, because I think on YouTube, like, it's easy. It's very easy. And I know this from personal experience. To You figure out something. You try things. Something works. It works well. You double down. And you get to a point where you're kind of like, okay, I have two options. I can continue to do this thing that works well and put people in places that make it easier for me and have a lot more free time and work less and keep doing this and kind of coast and live in, or you can take the resources that you're getting from maybe this thing that's working and reinvest those into scaling it or trying new things and continuing to build that. And I personally went through a phase maybe two years ago, maybe like 21, 22. I had a pretty good, I had a pretty good pandemic, not to brag. <laughs> it was pretty great. Me too, and I only bro. say that because like views were like, Yeet! Yeah. you know what I mean? Like, because everyone's sitting at home on their phone crying about the fucking real job everyone's, they had that wasn't so real anymore. Everyone's sitting at home anymore. dying and shit. Yeah, I know. So, so I got into a place where, and, and I think, you know, life is a lot about timing too. And for me, I got into a place where I was, I was just in coast mode. I wasn't innovating. I wasn't creating. I was doing what worked. But it did free up time for me at this time to be with my son. Like he was, he was two years old in 2020, and I've, I felt really good about the past several years because I was very present. I spent cool. a lot of time with him, my wife, good. and that balance for me was amazing. And I almost felt guilty because I was like, I, the amount of like 
the ROI I was getting from what I was doing on the internet felt more than I deserved. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know how to explain that really well, but I felt like I... I wasn't, you know, wasn't working as hard as I was. Cause when you start, like you have to fucking grind, like there's yeah, no way sure. around it. You're and doing you the jobs. Yeah. And, and then you, you get to a place and some things work and you can maybe take your foot off the gas a little bit for a little while. And, and I went through that phase where I was doing that and I think it was good, but I've, he's in kindergarten going into first grade now and he's older and I'm back in that, I'm back in that mode where like, man, I need, I need a challenge. Like I want to do something that's exciting, exhilarating, that might fail, that's difficult. I mean, part of the reason why I'm doing this right here and with you and doing the show is because I fucking love long form content. I find as someone, as someone that's a 38 year old man that spent a lot of years on YouTube, most of the content I consume now is more profound thought provoking content in a situation like this, where people are having conversations. And so I'm like, well, why am I not putting myself in that situation, creating content like that? So yeah. Uh, I don't know what that next step is for me, but like, I, I, you know, I have a lot of, a lot of admiration and reverence for what you've been able to do at the, at the ripe age of 27, uh, to, to be running the candy company and stuff. I think that that's the one thing I've always had in my mind where it's like, I, I want to do something that is a legitimate business in the sense that I'm, I have a product or I have something yeah. that people enjoy that's physical, that they like that I can be a part of because most of my career online has all been just digital content that is sure. monetized through advertisements. Right. Yep. And that's what I, I'm very envious of that. And I, I don't know what that looks like for me, but um, I think that's, I think that's great. And I'm, I, I wanted to actually kind of transition last one of the, one of the last questions I had is I, I don't know if many people know this, but you have a gaming studio. Is that okay to talk about? Should I not talk about this? Yeah, or? let's. Uh, we, we can. Oops, we can leave what can that I, in. What can I talk about? Uh, you, you can, you can say whatever you want, uh, but I will <laughs> respond very particularly. How do you want? So you, you're involved in a gaming studio, something like that, in some capacity. But this is like on the hush. Like, have have you talked about this at all in your YouTube videos? Not anything. This is no? the the the. However many if we, an hour and. 20 minutes or whatever, however far we are into the podcast of this podcast right here is the first time anybody's ever heard anything about me being involved in anything reg regarding gaming. I can cut it if you need me to. No, no, no. You can leave it in. It's oh, fine. It's going to come Fuck out eventually. It. Let's go, dude. All I'll right. leave nuggets. And I will. I want to I wanna expose myself. This, The inspiration for me asking that came from a personal conversation we had. Right. And I, but at the time I was talking to you, it didn't feel like it was something that needed to be hush hush. So that's why right. the only reason. No, no, you're ask. fine. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's not, it will be public. It will be public. Um, so it's kind of like first inning type of thing right now. Pretty much. It's, yeah. it's, we have, we have a lot of, we, we have a lot of progress and like that progress, and baby. <laughs> I will say, I will also say this, that if, 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 if I can, do it right, then I might only be a YouTuber for like the next eight months. Ooh, is that, come on, come on, bro. And that doesn't just mean gaming studio. That doesn't, uh, that, or you know, game whatever the fuck it is. I don't know what it is. It might not even be a gaming studio. It doesn't mean sour boys. It's like the whole what I'm trying to make in general, overarching okay. my okay. whole plan. So you have a not, vision. My whole vision, it, yeah, it, I will hopefully will not just be a, I will not be a YouTuber in eight months. I'll still make YouTube videos for sure, but it will not be something where I'm like, oh, I need to make a YouTube video today. Right. Oh. So it will be, <laughs> I, I, it, it's kind of like, it will be kind of like the PewDiePie where like you're, now you have that thing or, I mean, he retired off of YouTube, but it's, there will be no, the monetary incentive as good as it could be will not be strong enough to feel like you have to make a video when you don't want to because the other things Absolutely. are operating at full cylinder. Yeah, yeah. And it, and I'm truly, when I say this, I mean it, I'm not one to really operate off of monetary incentive. I think sure. the reason that I've done what most Cle of what clearly. I've done is just because I hire people that I love and I want them to make money because it I makes like them that. happy. And I want that's to do fantastic. stuff with them. That's, like, that that's, empathy we, that's that empathy we talked about. Exactly, about that's the number yeah. one thing. <laughs> and money is, that is really, literally just batteries. 
I, I was I, I I was curious to ask you the driving force for a lot of what you do that that you think that is one of the things that brings you the most fulfillment is being able to provide jobs for people in your life that you care about and that feels good. Yeah, yeah, that and also unbridled sexual frustration. <laughs> No, seriously, it actually does. It really does. Like, I, I work, I live with two of my best. You've met them. You've met Clint and Michael both, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're two Hot of my best friends. yeah. Dude, no. the <laughs> best friends in the world. Um, Like, seriously, it's so cool that I get to work with them and pay them enough money to where this can be their career. Yeah, That's yeah, fucking yeah. awesome. That's yeah. so badass. That's what makes me really excited. Because I'll be fine always. I mean, like, I am so lucky. If I, if I literally just don't, change anything i can just not like i have nothing to be i have nothing to take for granted essentially is what i'm trying to say yeah yeah and you i mean you're the type of guy just at 27 i've always said this about myself and i see this in people like if if something happened in the youtube channel fucking got deleted tomorrow you'd figure it out you're like oh, yeah. you are uh, you are cut from the cloth that is entrepreneurial you mm -hmm. know how to start things figure things out <clears throat> create businesses so that you, your job kind of becomes, like you said earlier, putting out fires like you're. Yeah. You, so you make videos, but you're also you're just adept at having to to transition, adapt when things go a little haywire. And yeah, so if something were to fucking go crazy, you're going to be fine. And obviously you have some other businesses, you got a little cushion there. But yeah, that's I was curious about your North Star. Now, you mentioned the vision like, and I'm not going to dig in that because it sounded like it was, it had to do with the, you know, it sounds mm -hmm. like you have something with the Sour Boys and the game, all these things, mm -hmm. the wheels are turning. But what do you, like, what do you see yourself? Like, Caleb, the age of Leon Lush, 10 years from now, decade, you're round in the corner on 40. Most of your beard is gray, and that's why you shave the sides tight now like I do. Okay. <laughs> what are we this? looking at? Like, what... Are you like CEO, 500 employees, uh, 10 companies? What are you thinking? Do you have a 10 year vision or are you looking like three, six, 12 months down the road? I think I have, a, I do not have a 10 year vision. I have a probably, <laughs> I think generally my vision is about a year. Okay. That's usually that's, what I can, yeah, usually what fair. I can surmise. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, until like some, like some kind of event or like a, I can see until the end of this specific thing that I have some form of control over. I can't imagine really what I would be. Hopefully children. I would like to have children. Okay. Um, I think yeah. having children would be pretty cool. It is. Uh, like 10, 15, somewhere in there. Um, yeah, let's go. Conservative it up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, will name them, I, will name, <clears throat> I will name one Ralph, one yeah. Soren, one Andrew. Yo, all my if, idols. If your girl goes more than four months without being pregnant, is she really a God-fearing woman? I don't exactly, think so. Exactly, yeah. Does she actually <laughs> have respect not. for the man of the house? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, no. I just tease. kidding. I'm we just we kidding. literally, my, my wife and I had one kid, and she's like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm yeah, fine. that's <laughs> fair. If you enjoyed this clip, you can find full episodes of Decently Indecent on Storyfire linked in the description below. And be sure to subscribe here for more clips and episodes in the future. Thanks for watching.